going to demonstrate the alternating dumbbell curl. Now you see people doing this in gyms all over the world. It's, it's basically the standard bicep exercise that you see people doing. And if you do it correctly, it's a very good one. Uh, unfortunately, though, there's a lot of room for air in the form, and you see that all, all around the gyms. People use too much momentum, they use too many muscle groups, and they're not really isolating their biceps effectively. Uh, basically, with an alternating dumbbell curl, you're using both arms, both dumbbells, or a dumbbell in each hand, to work both bicep muscles, but you're doing it one at a time. So you're going to train the right, then the left, then the right, then the left. What that allows you to do is focus on one arm so that you can isolate a little bit better, keep your form a little more strict than if you're doing both at once. Um, and it's going to allow you to use a little bit more weight because your arm gets a little bit longer rest at the bottom. So if you just watch my left arm, if you pretend I'm going every other with my right and my left, now just watch my left. See how much rest it's getting at the bottom there? If you're doing both together, they're getting a lot less rest which is going to make it a little harder. And now there's definitely benefits to doing that. But like I said, you're, allowed to, you're able to use a little bit more weight and you're able to focus on the form of each arm individually. Um, so that's why this is a very popular way to do this, whereas most exercises you do not alternate. For example, shoulder press, you do not see people doing alternating. Same thing with bench press, things like that. It's very popular for biceps though. Now, to perform an alternating dumbbell curl, let me grab the dumbbells. And this can be done seated or standing, but you generally see it standing. Uh, I prefer seated a lot of times because it takes some of the hip motion you can get for momentum out of it. But standing is fine. You want to take a nice solid shoulder width stance. Keep your same good posture you have on all exercises, chest up, shoulders back, flat tight core. So there's no point of weakness that's going to be loose when you're lifting. And you're going to supinate your wrist as you start lifting the dumbbell, which means you're turning your palm to face up. Let me show you from the side here. What's happening is my thumb is pointing forward. I have a neutral grip, which means my hands are facing my thighs. And as I lift the weight, I slowly twist my pinky in towards my shoulder so that my palm is facing up at the top. Now also watch the position of my elbow. My elbow drifts forward about two inches to allow me to come almost all the way up. You don't want it to come so far that your hand is resting on your shoulder muscle here. See how my forearm is straight up and down? That means my bicep is no longer doing any work. So you don't want to get a rest at the top. But by allowing your elbow to drift forward slightly, you're increasing the range of motion. Compared to staying back here, I'm not moving the weight nearly as far, so my muscle is not doing as much work. So keep tight, keep your chest up, shoulders back. Bring the elbow forward just enough to make it harder, not easier. And you also do not want to use momentum. This is a terrible lift for people to use a lot of momentum on. You see people, first of all, what I did there is I wound up, which means I rocked back to get a little momentum. So no wind up. You want to lift it from a dead hang at the bottom. And I'm also swinging my shoulder to drive my elbow forward. So the weight's traveling in a big old arc like that. That is not a bicep curl. That's a dumbbell swing. And you're not near working the muscle nearly as effectively. So keep good posture. Lift the weight from a dead hang at the bottom. Bring the elbow forward ever so slightly as you separate your wrist. And get a good stretch at the bottom. Now from the front with both arms, this is what it should look like. Up, twist the pinky in, control the downstroke so there's no swing. So I'm not leaning forward, leaning back. And alternate. And again, if you feel like you can't really control the lean, you can do this seated, keeping your hips all the way back against the backrest. And that'll keep your torso much more isolated. And you'll notice it'll be harder if you tend to cheat a little bit, because you can't cheat as much that way. Just remember, keep your form tight, and you're trying to work your bicep. You're not trying to swing a lot of weight. So choose a weight you can do very strictly, contracting the muscle, and work the bicep. 